Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software $100 and starting pricing for high-end software $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Boom, there it is. Boom, there it is. What's going on, guys? I'm here. I'm live. I am live. All right, everybody, come on in here. How y'all doing, man? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the live broadcast. I'm a little late. I'm a little late, but I'm here. I ain't too, too late. I was very late last week. But I'm here, man. How y'all doing? Glad to have the family tuning in. Let me, let me turn my volume down. Um, I'm going to need you guys, first thing, I'm going to need you to um, hit that like button. And then hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the white chalk outline. I just got my hair cut and, you know, got the fresh cut. So I'm here. Let me throw this on Facebook real quick. Everybody, if you're not following me on Twitter, everybody needs to follow me. I've been stuck at, I got like 300 and what, 18 followers. I should, I should have had a million followers on Twitter a long time ago. We need to get to that million. Let's get to the million followers. I need a million followers on Twitter and Instagram. So let's get that popping. Because see, they even here, I need a million followers here. They do things like unsubscribe people. So what we need, family, on this YouTube channel, on my Twitter page, on my um, Instagram page, because I'm, I'm stagnant right at around 300,000, 200, 300,000 on each platform. 300,000 on um, Twitter, 200,000 on Instagram, and you know, I've just been there. I've been there for a long time. Yeah, 300, yeah, damn the same amount. 300,000 on the gram, 318,000, 318,000 on Twitter. Let me double check on Twitter real quick. But yeah, when, I need to get a million, man. Family, let's let's see if we can make that happen. Let's get this thing up to a million. Yeah, three hundred and sixteen thousand on Twitter, two hundred and eighteen thousand here. Um, so yeah, we need to get to that million. We need to get a million subscribers here. Million followers on Twitter. Million followers on Instagram. All right. All right. Listen. First things first. Let's everybody. Retweet this on your Twitter. And if you have not subscribed, everybody subscribe and let everybody else know to subscribe to this channel so we can have them soak up some very good game. Y'all know how good the game is here. You guys know how heavy the game is. Y'all know we chop up some very good game and we're going to chop up some very good game tonight. Um, first thing, um, bless up to our brother Jamie Foxx. They saw him. He was on a boat in Miami, so it looks like he's doing better, which is great. That's a phenomenal thing. So he's out and about. He was on a boat. He was just kind of waving to fans in Miami. I think um, TMZ got the footage today or yesterday. But um, shout out to our good brother Jamie Foxx, man. Good to see that he's out and about. That's a great thing. That's great that our brother's out and about, man. I, I From what I was hearing, he was really down bad. With whatever happened to him. And yeah, people are still kind of tight lipped about what exactly happened to our brother. But I'm glad he's he he looked like he's in good spirits. 
he's out and about. So, man, prayers up, and that's a that's a blessing. Somebody said it could be a clone. Hey, yeah. It looked kind of weird, to be honest, but it did look a little weird. But now, nah, I'm going I'm to just go with it. I, I'm going to go with it. It's Jamie. It's weird that, you know, it was on a boat far away. I don't know, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to just say it's Jamie. So, blessings to that brother. Oh, yeah, and also, Matulu Shakur, you know, Tupac's stepdad, he just, um, he transitioned. He died. Matulu Shabazz, he was um, Shakur. What did I say Shabazz? Shakur, I'm sorry. Matulu Shakur. That was Tupac Shakur's stepfather. Matulu was in prison for years. He was part of the Black Liberation Army. The Black, and I've talked about the Black Liberation Army before. Those were some riders. The Black Liberation Army, those were some riders. They, they don't like talking about them. They just, they kind of tie them in with the Black Panthers. They were different than the Black Panthers. The Black Liberation Army, they moved different. Um, their motto was, you don't choose us, we choose you. That's why they were never really infiltrated. Um, they went out and recruited who the members would be. And they were engaged in a lot of urban guerrilla warfare. Um, there has to be a book done about them. We might have to put something together to let people know who the Black Liberation Army was and how, how for real they were. They were not a joke. Um, he was in prison and they knew he was going to die. He had cancer, so they let him out to die, basically. But I think, um, you know, the team at the museum, the Hidden History Museum, yeah, 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 Black Liberation Army, we, we might have to put together a little book to let folks know what's up. What we're doing now, me and my team at the Hidden History Museum, we're getting a lot of books together now on some of the subjects that we have in the museum. So we're going to have a lot of that popping. Because right now, family, it's imperative that we educate our children. And it's important that we start documenting history because there is a war on black history right now. Um, as we know, down in Florida, they're damn near, they're having an inquisition as far as black books. They're just taking black books out of schools and libraries left and right. And they're also doing this in other places. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, they're trying to stop people from talking about the Tulsa race riot in a real way. They're trying to remove the racial references away from the Tulsa race riots. I did um, a live last night. Do y'all remember there was an Ethiopian tether who got on and he was a fan of Nick Fuentes and all of these people. And we're going to get heavy on that tonight, later on in the broadcast. And this Ethiopian tether was up here talking about Tulsa. And he started this whole weird denial of a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, you know, I did my research on Tulsa and the race riot. And it wasn't as bad as people make it seem. Wasn't that many people that got killed. And I didn't see any evidence of any bombings happening. And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? All of this stuff is very well documented the hell are you talking about? This dude was, and I'm up here giving proof and letting him know, hey man, there's eyewitnesses. Are the eyewitnesses lying? You have images and photos of the aftermath where this place was clearly bombed from the sky. So what the hell are you talking about? Well, er, uh, all that er, uh, stuff. So there's this effort with white supremacists. So obviously, obviously because this, this is one of those guys, this is the tether. These tethers stay on these little websites, these little back channels where these white supremacists cook up their talking points. And you have all types of um, influential white supremacists getting and cultivating these talking points so they can go out and put them into policies. Okay. So now they're really trying to remix our history. And they're trying to literally whitewash it to take the the white supremacist racism out of it. Yeah? Yeah, a judge down there in Tulsa denied the remaining survivors their payments. You know, we're not tripping on that, but it, it is what it is. But it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, for us to document this history. So we are going to be putting out a lot of different books from the Hidden History Museum. We got a couple coming out in the next couple of weeks. 
And we're going to do, we're working on a lot of different ones because our narratives, we have to document them. It is up to us to document them and it's up to us to circulate them amongst each other. It's just that simple. We just got to go back old school, fam. The, and I'm still going to do documentary films, but it's important to have the written words there with you, your family, and your children because they're working on our next generation. Yeah? They're working on the next generation. It was a white, suspected white supremacist female judge that, that threw the case out. Yeah? So... A lot of stuff we got to unpack. Now, remember, everybody, um, retweet this. Let everybody know that we're here right now. And by the way, um, we got a book coming out, a small book coming out with the deodorant that we have. We have a foundational Black American-based deodorant that we're going to be releasing in the next couple of weeks based on our foundational Black American history, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. Also, we have a children's slash young adult book that's coming out with, with images, uh, an A to Z book. I say children and young adults because the book is not like, you know, it's not going to be like on some Dr. Seuss stuff, um, but it's something that we need to show our children. It's something that young adults and, and other adults can get into too. It's a very interesting book that it's a family book. I'll say that with emphasis for the children because it's important for them to get the game. But I say it's a family book because adults will be able to enjoy the book that we have, the A to Z, um, Hidden History from A to Z book. That's the name. Well, well that's the working title right now. So we're going to kind of go through A and B. Well, we're going to talk about, it's a quick read. We talk about different people alphabetically. All right. We talk about different people alphabetically. Yes, we have a unisex deodorant for men and women. Yes, we do. It's a unisex deodorant. Based on our culture. All right? But listen, what we're talking about today, today's topic, is trashy acts of surrender. All right? What we're talking about is trashy acts of surrender. What we're seeing now there is this attempt to have a gender war between black men and women. And what's interesting, a lot of people who are fueling or trying to fuel this gender war are the tether class people, to be honest. We got to be honest. We saw what happened with this situation with Kiki Palmer. The situation that happened with Kiki Palmer, let me, we, we did a broadcast about it. Kiki Palmer has a baby dad. She's in a relationship with this guy. They got a baby, a newborn baby. And she went to an Usher concert up there in Vegas. And boy, she was hella extra. She had on a little revealing outfit. And she was real extra. Very disrespectful. And her dude said something online. And then everybody kind of attacked that dude. A lot of people attacked the dude. And the whole vibe was, hell, she makes most of the money. She can do what she damn want. Y'all dudes, black men need to shut up. If she making the money, she can do what she want to do. And there was a lot of tether babble going on. And a lot of the people co-signing Kiki's disrespect a lot of foreign flags. I noticed that. A lot of the writing pieces put on this, co-signing that nonsense, was a lot of tethers. Now, why is that? Why are these tethers co-signing that feminist talking point? Because a lot of that stuff is based on that white feminist talking point nonsense. And... NBC, they even wrote an article about it. And, and by the way, what, it, what she was doing was disrespectful. She was just really going over the top, ogling over Usher. The, the outfit, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Just the way she was acting was funny style. And disrespectful to her dude. And uh, there's been other situations where Usher is singing to women. He was singing to the woman of Saweetie. 
and a couple of other people, and they weren't doing all that extra stuff. You know, they were like they were grooving, but they were on their, you know, they were they weren't doing all that extra stuff. Kiki was just extra. There's a I've already played one clip the other day of her, you know, kind of grinding on Usher and all that stuff. And here's another one where she's all, you know, mouth open and in in, in in a certain position. Oh, you know. So Usher has his shirt off. Yeah, so Usher has his shirt off. So she's doing all this stuff. Yeah, now stuff like that, that's meant to be disrespectful to your dude. That, that's extra as hell. All right. Now that's meant to be disrespectful. All right. I mean, you're doing, you're really, really extra. Us to take your shirt off and you up there bucking your eyes. You showing, making a point to buck your eyes. Ooh, Lord, the things I do to Usher. Ooh, Usher. Ooh. You're, you're being very extra. <laughs> you know, people are talking about Usher got this. Uh, nah, I ain't going to go there. I'm not going to go there on my brother. But yeah, that you're just doing. Yeah, now you just... That right there is disrespect. That's just you going over the top, bucking your eyes. Ooh, look at them abs. Look at them abs, Usher. Ooh, my mouth. Ooh, my mouth. Why? Really? Not with that postnatal pussy up in there. Ma'am, stop. That was the disrespect you do. That's all that was. That was to disrespect you, dude. You were making it a point to disrespect your guy. That's why so many of Nissan Altima Twitter was co-signing that nonsense. Because this whole thing where if you make more money than your guy, you're supposed to have somewhat of an abusive disposition. They equate being in a power position in the relationship. They equate power with abuse. If you are the powerful one, meaning the, the person making the most money, you're supposed to be abusive. That, 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 that white feminist mindset that they give to you, but the white feminists don't act like that in their relationships. They know better. Even if they make more money than a white man, they know how to be on their P's and Q's. They understand the dynamic of white supremacy and their place in it. But see, we've been dictated by plantation rules. See, there's a mammy contingency here where the white supremacists, they've elevated certain women in the mammy position and they feel like, okay, I'm standing here next to Massa. Massa has elevated me over you Negroes. So I'm going to take on the mindset and disposition of Massa when it comes to you Negroes. So when he says he's white and he says so, I'm going to be like, I'm a mammy and I say so when I got Massa to back me up. That's where all of this disrespectful, degenerate, trashy behavior comes from. When you have folks telling us it's the black man's fault that we have ratchets out here. No, it's the white supremacist's fault. Because when we say, hey, we don't want y'all to act like that. It's like, hey, shut up. We can do what we want to do. We got the money. White daddy takes care of us. We can do what we want to do. And then, yeah, all that jealous stuff. And they were saying, well, he jealous of her people. What? Nobody's jealous of Kiki Palmer. Let's, let's, let's keep it a buck. Because, again, the hood rat mentality. Y'all so used to dusty Negroes. You think if you're doing the bare minimum over a dusty Negro, you some kind of boss. Kiki Palmer ain't really balling out like that where she could be disrespectful to dudes and he's supposed to take it. This whole thing where, hey, Kiki, that's the breadwinner. Kiki's the boss. You, He need to shut his ass up and just listen. No. Kiki Palmer ain't holding money like that for a dude to shut the hell up. No, no, y'all talking like Kiki Palmer sitting on some Oprah money. I said this the other day. Oprah can tell Stedman to shut the hell up and Stedman will be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you go out. Go ahead and go out. I'm not going to question you. I'm going to stay home and just watch the money. I'm going to watch these billions. Oprah's sitting on billions. 
Yeah. Oprah's sitting on billions, so I'm gonna watch the money. Kiki Palmer ain't sitting on no paper like that. No disrespect. Kiki Palmer, it's not an A-list actress. Nobody's hating on that sister, but what's the last hit Kiki Palmer movie? Or what's the hit Kiki Palmer movie? Kiki ain't balling like that, especially for a dude to take any kind of disrespect. Kiki ain't balling like that. So y'all want to get dusty niggas so you can flex on them, you see? Y'all love dating a dusty nigga so that you can get your little old 80,000 80, a year salary to flex on dudes. Yeah? You understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, a lot of the tethers are sitting here co-signing this nonsense and they like to co-sign degeneracy within our culture so nbc they wrote an article they wrote this article here this is on nbc darius jackson the father of kiki palmer's son is facing heat after shaming the actress for a dress she wore at a recent usher concert some black women said jackson's comments represents the pressure black mothers face to act respectfully. What? So black women, they're saying that you're being pressured to act respectfully. Listen to that. Listen to that. That's a backhanded compliment. You're being pressured. I want y'all to really unpack what that means. That's saying you're so naturally loose and uncontrollable, people have to pressure you to act like you got some damn respect about yourself. That's what they're saying. Now, we, let's read the article. This is the white mainstream media putting this out. This is NBC, all right? Now, listen to this. Kiki Palmer is the latest black mother facing backlash over what she wears. What, what black mother? Darius Jackson, the father of Kiki Palmer's son, is facing heat after shaming the beloved actress for a sheer dress she wore while attending Usher's concert. All right. Fans quickly came to Palmer's defense, mocking Jackson, a fitness trainer, um, for being known mainly as her partner, Amid the uproar, some black women said Jackson's statements represent how motherhood and respectability are rigidly linked in the black community. What? Okay. Respect, okay. One of the earliest misrepresentations of black motherhood is the mammy trope, said Adria Goodman, an associated of, associate of professor of communications at a um, University of Mary Washington in Virginia. The so-called Mammy character was a huge maternal figure, especially for white families. She was presented as asexual. The focus was on her mothering skills. Oh, this is that feminist talk. This is that feminist talk. Okay, this is that feminist nonsense where they're trying to tell black women, being a slut, there's some kind of... Um, revolutionary spirit in being some damn slut because the mammy was asexual and your sexuality was repressed during slavery and Jim Crow so you can liberate yourself by acting like an uncontrollable slut stank and twerk all over the place that's that white supremacist white feminist nonsense that they have given those talking points that they've given y'all all right Black women have always been overly sexualized, especially in slavery, where the raping and sexual exploitation was completely normalized. The mammy was an extension of the Jezebel and the Sapphire. The mammy had worn out her sexual availability because she got older and overweight. Let's talk history for real. The mammy was basically a former Sapphire Jezebel. That's why the mammy had all them kids. 
the mammy had aged out. You aged out of Jezebel Sapphire status and then you became the mammy when you became too old to just rape all the damn time. Let's tell all of it. You just became too old to rape. They had a whole fresh crop of other women to rape on. All right? So don't say that the mammy was asexual when they, the mammy had all of these kids that she was forced to have, primarily by the white supremacist slave owners and the overseers. And then after slavery, when black women were working as maids in these households, they were still being raped by these white males and they couldn't go to nobody and tell them. Who are you going to tell? Eh? So let me read the rest of this article, all right? All right, it says, uh, da, 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 da. generations of black women have been taught that when you have a baby, your life is not your own, says Yasmin Jamila, the founder of Transparent Black Girl, that sounds like Tether Talk, a digital, a digital wellness brand, that we're the caregivers and nurses of our family. You're supposed to be that. Recently, Goldman said the pendulum has swung further to define some black mothers negatively for their sexuality. There's the stereotypical welfare queen or baby mama, the person who was portrayed as being so sexually irresponsible that she had all these children and now she's on assistance. Yeah, the white supremacists created that. And they still push that with these twerking videos and all of that stuff. In, in contrast, in the mommy trope and the hypersexual mother stereotype produced a damn if you do, damn if you don't tension for black mothers. They can never win. No, what are you talking about? In the uh, a recent video of Palmer surface where she was twerking with Jackson present, the fact of him being part of the video shows what's considered respectful for black women and how those expectations for black women change based on those situations. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Famous and non-famous black mothers are disproportionately impacted by a myriad of adverse health outcomes, including postpartum depression, um, ovary syndrome, maternal mortality. Boy, they're trying to tie a lot of this stuff. So acting stank is going to cure all of these illnesses? What are you talking about? Given these health disparities, the fact that Kiki is thriving post-baby is an amazing thing. That should be celebrated. What, what, not what, what does that have to do with her stanking around? What, what does that have to do? Oh. <sighs> Boy, they reach for this. I mean, online spectators are not privy to the inner working of celebrity relationships, but the magnitude range of reactions on the Palmer incident speak to tensions around how women and mothers are expected to behave. That freedom that we see black women have, like Kiki had at the concert, it challenges people, the freedom to act stank. It makes people think like, who are you to feel like you can have this life of being a stank and a slut? Basically, when black women start to do well, we find ways to try to humble them. So doing well and, and thriving is being able to act like a slut to them. And this was written by Uwa Ede Osifo, all right? A tether. So they had a tether write this. So the whole narrative is basically like as a black woman, you got a right of freedom. You want black women, real freedom, and it's not white supremacy. No, no, no. Real freedom is to just be as sexually uncontrollable as you can be. Be a sexual slut. Notice it's always tethers promoting the slut thing. Amber Rose going around with the slut walk talk. Yeah, come on out here and just be a loose, uncontrollable slut. Notice it's always Tethers doing that. It's always Tethers highly promoting that. Promoting those white feminist tropes. Now, why do they do that? First of all, the Tethers are not dumb. The Tethers, along with the white supremacists, 
they understand that that type of mindset will destabilize the foundational black community. They understand that. That's why they don't promote that in their culture. You don't see Amber Rose going over there to Cape Verde promoting no damn slut walk. You don't see Uwa Udifu or whatever her name is going over there to Nigeria or West Africa or wherever or Ghana promoting that slut talk. They don't do that in their culture. They promote marriage in their culture. In these blogs that's run by Tethers, every time they talk about West Africa or the Caribbean, they're talking about some lavish wedding that they've had between men and women. They do not promote that nonsense over there in their culture. Nicki Minaj don't go over there to Trinidad promoting that stuff that she promotes here. Even though a lot of that carnival shaking your ass in the street stuff, that comes from a lot of the Caribbeans, by the way. All of that walking up and down the street, twerking and booty popping, that comes from the Caribbean by way of Miami. That's where it came into our culture in the late 80s with Luke and all of those guys. Yeah? All of that stuff was introduced to us from tether cultures. So they know that ultimately that destabilizes us. That's why they like to promote that stuff. Cardi B. Look at the people, the Trinas, all that stuff out of Miami. Cardi B, all that slut mindset stuff, a lot of it is brought in by outsiders. And I've said this a million times. The Cardi Bs, they don't go to the Latin American Awards doing all that stuff. When they go to the Latin American Awards, everybody's on their P's and Q's. They slut it up with us, but when it's time to represent the Latin culture, everybody's very astute. At the BET Awards, the recent one, notice it was Ratchet Fest. Everything about it was ratchet and degenerate. Everything except when Buster got on stage and they start bigging up Jamaicans. Notice that's the only part of the whole program that had any dignity when Buster got up there representing Jamaicans and they're shouting out all the Jamaicans. That was literally the only thing in the BET Awards that had any sense of dignity. Everything else was ratchet fest. Yeah? They promote that filth in our culture because they know it's going to destabilize us. They know this. And the thing is, this whole, I make the money, I make the rules, that old, that's like Mr. From the Color Purple. A lot of these mammies with that feminist mindset, they talk about patriarchy because they want to be a part of patriarchy. They sound like the white supremacist. They start talking and acting like the damn white supremacists when they get to us when it comes to black men. It's shut up and just go along with the program. But hey, just because you make more money than me, I'm not going to take no disrespect. Well, I pay the bills. I'm running the show. I'm the real breadwinner. And they equate breadwinner, the person making the most money, with being abusive. It's always some abusive thing. They got to have some kind of abusive mindset to the man, black man, to the black male. And it's all about them running things, them running things until a brother pull a city boy finesse on him and then flip him and get the bag. Then all of a sudden, hey, how come you can't be traditional no more? See, when it's a situation like Kiki, when you want to run the streets and you got a dude at home with the baby and you running out here grinding on niggas in your see-through dress, it's like, yeah, I'm running the show. I'm the boss. Stay in your place. Yeah, a, a, a real man supposed to make the money. So since you ain't a real man, you're just going to have to sit here and be a kept nigga. Okay. They're cool with a dude being a kept dude until he flipped the script and get a an alimony check out your ass like Stevie J just got. Stevie J was married to Faith Evans and they got out the marriage, but Stevie J is going to get spousal support from Faith Evans. City boy up. Stevie J is getting some damn um, alimony, some spousal support from Miss Faith Evans. Faith Evans still makes a grip on tour. A lot of these artists, they make a grip on tour. So Stevie J is going to get a bag. So now they cry foul. Now, people like Stevie J and Mary J. Blige husband, because she had to break him off too. She had to break him off. They were like, oh, wait a minute. 
A man shouldn't be getting no money. Oh, yes, he should. Oh, yes, he. Oh, yeah. Yes, he should. Yeah, if you run in the show, if you can run the streets, if girls are players too, huh? If girls are players too, if girls are players, girls are payers. All right? If you a player, you're going to have to be a payer. It pays the cost to be the boss. No, no, no. That's what a boss do. A boss pays child support and spousal support. You said you the boss. Now boss up them payments to the kept nigga, city boy up. <laughs> if, if that's what, don't start getting traditional now. Oh, oh, hold on now, hold on. Y'all eyes start bucking when y'all start seeing some of your idols having to pay them spousal support. Oh, hold on now, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. Now, I didn't wait, wait a minute. I'm still a lady now. I still a woman. I'm still traditional. Hold on, then you put on your, you, you put on your damn grandma scarf. Now you old fashioned. Hold on now. No, no. I'm I still a woman. I's a lady. Now you want to dress like damn Harriet Tubman. Now you want to go old school. I, I don't I don't know about making them payments now. I just want to be in the kitchen and do what a woman's do's. No, god damn it. You wanted to wear the big drawers? Wear the big drawers and pay that dude. Don't get in the kitchen now. Don't put your apron on now, damn it. You were out there slanging it <laughs> like a boss. Boss up on them payments. Yeah, y'all stop talking all that boss shit when that them payments come through. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't you don't want you don't talk all that boss stuff no more. All of a sudden you want to get your feet done and cook a nigga something. All right. When the, when the payments come through, when you gotta cough up some bread. That's why Oprah ain't trying to jump bad too heavy on Stedman. Uh, Oprah and Stedman sitting up there. Stedman got a tell-all book in him. Boy, and Oprah knows. Oprah know not to jump bad on Stedman. Oprah, she's sitting on them billions. She ain't going to marry Stedman, but she ain't going to throw him to the curb. Boy, oh, Stedman, got a, he got a tell-all book. He got a, a billion-dollar seller in him. Boy, I wish he go jump bad on Oprah. I, I, I wish Oprah jumped bad on Stedman so Stedman can hit that book out on her ass. She ain't going to jump bad on Stedman. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's all boss talk until them boss payments have to come through. Then you want to be submissive. All right? Then you want to go ahead and get your nails done and put some rouge on and be real submissive to a dude. Uh-huh. Then you want to get traditional. No. No, no, let's be modern. Since you bossing up and you running the damn streets, when people run the streets, you know, they got to come out the pockets. You ain't going to have it both ways. Yeah. If y'all want the city boys up, because y'all y'all don't want to play that game, ladies. Y'all, we If y'all going to do the kept nigga thing, and I'm going to do what I do and keep a nigga at home because I got all the paper. Ladies, y'all don't want to play that game. Some of these niggas out here be like, okay. Y'all don't know. We got some city boys out here that'll be like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go. All right. Yeah, you running things. Go ahead, baby. I'm going to sit here and shut right on up. You go ahead and run them streets. And by the way, what's the pin code to the um, the ATM card? I'm trying to see something. Uh, I'm trying to see what you're sitting on before I go hit this lawyer up. <laughs> yeah, you got some some city boy Stedmans. Stedman is the king of the city boys. Yeah. Yeah, y'all don't really want to play that game. Y'all don't want to get the city boys out here for real, for real. Y'all really don't want to play that game, ladies. Because you got some of these dudes out here that'll dick you down and pat your purse out and, and empty your whole purse. Y'all really don't want to play that game. Yeah? So don't let these people egg you on with these jive-ass, non-traditional relationship um, tropes that they're trying to push on to you. We got a lot of folks in here. Shout out to everybody in here. Everybody hit that subscribe button. <clears throat> Hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen.
hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, let everybody know we're live, and also retweet this on your um, Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody retweet this. Everybody retweet the broadcast. Let everybody know that we are in here, ladies and gentlemen. Retweet the broadcast. Retweet, 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 ladies and gentlemen. But like I said, a lot of these women, what they want to do, they want to have the, the mindset of a white supremacist. We got to understand with a lot of the ratchetness that's going on out here, that's being normalized, that's being platformed by the white supremacists, that's being platformed by the dominant society. You have a lot of these loosey goosey women out here doing all of this repulsive twerking and the twerking is so played out at this point to me, it's so played out. And it's just done as a form of dominance and rebellion. It's not even done to be sexy no more. It's done for the sole purpose of being rebellious. They're just doing it. Hey, look at me. I'm doing something I ain't supposed to do. It's like a rebellious child. A lot of this ridiculous twerking and nonsense that's going on out here. It's like children being mischievous. People being perpetual children, we have too much of that. Instead of dealing with systematic white supremacy, you have a lot of people who are like submitting to it. A lot of that twerking nonsense is people submitting to white supremacy. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to sit here and just be rebellious within the system of oppression. Because they try to make it seem like twerking and acting stank is some kind of revolutionary act. It is not. That's what they did on plantations. They had you dancing, twerking, and um, being sexually exploited, um, using you as breeders. The plantations were filled with nothing but sexual exploitation. All right? And the reason why we have a lot of the tethers promoting a lot of the degenerate behavior and a lot of these feminist tropes, that's because over in their, in their homeland, you're controlled indirectly by the white supremacists. And because there's not a day-to-day -day correspondence that's direct with the white supremacists, a lot of y'all don't understand where a lot of the tropes are coming from. So over in some of these third world countries, you don't have white daddy and white mommy using feminism directly to elevate and create the gender war. See, over there in these third world countries, the Caribbean, over in Africa, um, everybody's subjugated equally. All right? It's all subjugated equally. Over here, they we're all subjugated, but what they'll do, they'll do a divide and conquer. They always elevate certain groups over the other as a divide and conquer because we have direct access to the white supremacists. So they have to create buffer zones. When you have direct access to them, they need buffers. Just like in the Caribbean. That's why they have all of these color constructs within the Caribbean society. Because in places like Jamaica, the white supremacists started to be outnumbered by the black people. So when they wanted to stay in power, they said, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to give the lighter skinned black people a certain racial designation the group that's a little darker than that, we give them a racial designation. They started giving all, if all of these different skin tones, different racial designations to all act as buffer groups. So they would give one a little bit of something, another a little bit more than that group, another one a little bit more than that group. So everybody's fighting over all these little crumbs among each other and using cake soap to try to get as light as the next group of black folks. All, of, all the while, the white supremacists are sitting back. Yes, they got to go through all of these other tethered groups before they get to me. You understand? That's why they do it like that. With us, we don't get too much into the colorism thing because they don't elevate people based on color, skin tone over here. But they will do it based on gender. You, they, they will give you certain privileges and benefits based on gender. Not much, just barely enough so that you can pat yourself on the back and thump your chest. And over in Africa, where you don't have too many white supremacists living there in certain places, 
there's no need for them to do that. They can subjugate the people um, as a group. All of them are in poverty. They just put them all in poverty. And what happens is because of the systematic deprivation and you don't have none of the white feminists fake protecting the women over there. See, they can't go to a white feminist or white daddy to say, hey, this black man is doing something to me. So the women over there, they get abused. You think? The women over there in Africa and the Caribbean, a lot of them are abused big time by the tether men over there. They got to go through female circumcisions. There's a lot of abuse with the women over there. So when they come here, they run to the feminist stuff. The feminism is protection for them. And then they try to use the feminism against us. That foundation of black American men, systematically, we're not abusive to sisters like that. You do have abusive niggas. Let's don't get it wrong. But systematically, we don't really get down like they do. They, we don't be doing all that female circumcision. We don't do all that shit. They do some real weird stuff to the women in some of these places, dude. They do weird ass stuff. So these women come over here and run to white mommy, white daddy for protection. See, they're not going to fight them. Yeah. So yeah, they get under white mommy, white daddy, and they're twerking and popping coochie to let white mommy, white daddy know we've surrendered. I want y'all to understand all that twerking and coochie popping, that's a signal to say, I have surrendered. I'm not fighting. I'm just going to sit here and dance and undermine these Negroes for you, white mommy, white daddy. Twerking is the least revolutionary thing you can do. There is nothing revolutionary about twerking and shaking your ass. That is nothing but a sign of surrender. That's all it is. And a lot of these tether women with the feminist mindset, they want to be just like white supremacist zaddy. That's who they want to be like. They want to be just like them. And we've seen that with that whole situation with Nick Fuentes doing that interview with um, Fresh and Fit. Those tethers, these Caribbeans and African dudes. So Nick Fuentes was on there. Now, Nick Fuentes is a hardcore white supremacist. Um, Nick Fuentes got on Fresh and Fit and Fresh and Fit had a bunch of black women sitting up there hugged up and booed up with Nick Fuentes. All right. Most of these women were tethers. Most of these women were tethers. All right. Hold on one second. Let me, I'm trying to show the image of this stuff. Hold on. So most of those women on Fresh and Fit with Nick Fuentes were full-blown tethers. We verified about three of them being Haitian. Uh, one of them is Latina. Um, one is a certified bed wench. So people are just going down the line, getting information about these women. All right. Now here's the image here. This is the thumbnail of today's broadcast. So this is Nick Fuentes up here on Fresh and Fit, and they made sure... He was surrounded by a bunch of black women and people are like, oh, what's going on with black women, black women? These, let's be clear, these are not the representatives of black women. Most of these women are tethers. They are verified tethers. Most of these women are not foundational black American women. That's first and foremost. That was up there sucking up to Nick Fuentes. All right. These were not foundational black American women. People have been looking and investigating these women, looking in their backgrounds. Let's look into some of their backgrounds, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on one second. Let's look into some of the back. Um, one of the women right here. Let me get this up here while I'm talking. One of the women, the real kind of the chunky one on the end. This is her right here. Sauce goddess. Um, yeah, I'm Haitian. All right. That's the thick one on the end. All right. 
that's her, Sauce Goddess, in front of the Haitian flag and all that stuff. That's her without the filters. Notice she gets in front of it. She's covered up. Now, when, when they're going to represent Haiti, now you covered up. All right. Hold on. All right. And look at what she says about black men. Hold on. Somebody said black men for black women. Says who? Initially, you think, however, black men or kings y'all love considering yourselves honor by black women. We initially are queens. We're treated, sexualized, and disregarded as hoes. We're undervalued, depreciated, and constantly disrespected. Two are also black, which means you black men are entitled to black women. That's the shit I never comprehend. Quit the entitlement and evaluate how black men can change the respect culture for black women. What? Now, this is somebody who's up here booed up with a white supremacist talking about how black men can respect her. She's up here booed up with a damn white. So this is her all on his lap. This is her thick ass, her chunky ass. I'm sexy. He's so nervous. Nick Fuentes, the most banned man on the internet. Please don't cancel me. Thanks, Fresh and Fit, for having me on last night. Okay. So, yeah, she's all plantation flirting with Zaddy. And then they sit up and act like they don't know he was a hardcore white supremacist. If y'all don't stop, now these women are going around splaining like they didn't know this was a hardcore white supremacist. Somebody said, stop it, she's the BBW. There you go. So yeah, we're people have been investigating these women and most of them are tethers, man. Most of these women are certified tethers. You dig? Here's another one. All right. Here's another one up here twerking on Nick Fuentes. What's liberating, what's revolutionary about this? Twerking on a hardcore white supremacist who says that black people have low IQs and we're intellectually inferior. What's, what's revolutionary about you twerking on this dude? What, what's the freedom in that? You have the freedom to twerk on a white supremacist during slavery. Yeah? That's surrendering. There's another one. This woman right here. All kissing on Zaddy. Yeah, they were all smooching and hugged up on this man. You know? Most of these, again, these are tethers. I'm not going to put this on my FBA sisters. These were tethers doing this for the most part. That woman right there is Haitian. Yeah. That was a Haitian woman, too. Let's unpack all of this stuff. Hold on. Let me da, 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 da. Hold on. Where's the thing that shows what well, she's standing? She got Haitian flags all in her thing. I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to bring all the receipts on these people. Uh, da, 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 da. She's the mother. Where's that thing? Where's her? Um, I want to show y'all. The, hey, where's the Haitian flags? Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to show. I'm trying to bring all the receipts. Uh, where's that thing of her? Okay, y'all bear with me. I'm trying to show all of it. And, uh, yeah, most of these are tether women, guys. And he was on there using the N-word, and they're sitting up there encouraging him to use the N-word. They're sitting up there encouraging him to do that. Where's that thing? Where's the thing, man? Okay, where's the thing? I just had the thing where it was showing that that woman is Haitian. Because she has some Haitian flags in her thing. And I hate when I pull some stuff up and now I can't find it. All right. Hold on, where is it? Where? I'm going to find it. I'm going to... Uh, da, 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 da. Retweet. Oh, oh, they found some other tweets on her too. Is that her? Okay, is that her? Somebody said this is her page with some deleted tweets. I don't, hold on. Somebody said this is her thing. Was she, I allow white men to call me the N-word while they were effing me. Because somebody's saying, yeah, she had a, a Haitian flag. Somebody said that's some of her deleted tweets where she's getting into race play. Ah, oh, man, I want to find, a, so yeah, these are, these are tether women, guys. These are tether women who's on this vibe. And hold on. Okay, 
I'm trying to find some more of their stuff. But y'all get the point, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all get the point. That's an act of surrender. These are people surrendering, and, and they were on there, Kakan and Kikin, encouraging that man to use the N-word. Hold on, listen to this. Fair use, by the way, fair use, fair use, fair use. This is them getting him to use the N-word. Hold on. No, I can't. Uh -huh. yeah. say, come on, man. I want you to say it. Oh, hey, 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 what you got? You want me to say it? Yeah. 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 Is anyone going to hit me yeah. if I say it? Yeah. No. Come on, Nick. What you got? All right. Oh. Nigger. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, they're in there egging Shango? him on. They're in there egging him on to use the N word, and they're cockeyed and keeking. All right, and you know, fresh and fit. We know they're certified coons. These are a couple of tether certified coons. Um, Myron put on a clan hood in there, and they, you know, it's that weak trolling. Hey, look at me! I'm acting like white zaddy. Hold on, hold on. He has on a clan. Hood, hold on, why is this thing acting up? Hold on, hold on, guys, it's not rolling. Hold on, let me redo it. All right, hold on, hold on. So he has a. <laughs> Okay, so you got to, you know, they're in there trolling with this white supremacist, trying to normalize this white supremacist. They got a bunch of um, airhead tether women in here, Kakan and Kiki in with them. And they're twerking on this dude, kissing on him, rubbing on him and all of this stuff. Yeah, the optics. Let's be clear. They are not, they are not, they are not the representation of foundational black American women. These are not, are not, are not our representatives. I do not allow these um, tether women to misrepresent foundational black American women. We do not allow that. And all of these guys are all clicked in. Them and all of these other tethers. There's another dude that clicked in with named Sneeko. And Sneeko was just on um, um, No Jumper talking about black culture not too long ago. Let me play a clip of that. This one guy, this Sneeko guy, he's a, is he a YouTuber or something? He's one of these guys that's in these little cliques where basically these non-white guys get clout by saying little slick stuff about black society. So this Sneeko guy, where's Sneeko? All right, this Sneeko guy here, he's talking about black culture as mind control. And ain't Sneeko a rapper himself from what I understand? Ain't this guy a rapper? Now, from what I understand, he's Haitian and Filipino talking about black culture. Hold on one second. Hold on. Listen. To when me. I said black culture promotes degeneracy, that's something that everybody knows. If you listen to any rap music, like Dirk, I listen to Lil Durk all the time. He's rapping about murder all the time. He no Fair use, by the way, fair use. Knows that that will sell more music. He knows that rap beef and like, I'm going to kill you, you're going to kill me. But you're 29 with kids. Still talking about like killing other people and you're going to risk your life over music. Like everything that hip hop promotes, besides Ye, besides a few like, you know, Christian rap or stuff like that, it's all just drugs, murder. Bitches. When a black person becomes more affluent, when they put on a suit, when they get a good job, when they speak correctly, you're speaking white. Then why are you talking like a white boy? Um, no. See, that right there, that lie, that's going to have to be corrected. Y'all better correct that lie. You're not considered talking like a white boy if you put on a suit and speak correctly. You're considered talking like a white boy if you talk corny. That is a lie, and I talked about this on Twitter the other day, this lie that if a black person is articulate, we think that that's acting white or talking white. No, it's not. No, it's not. Being corny is talking white. Come on, if you speak correctly, no. When we say somebody is talking white, it's usually a black person, a black male who's trying to sound like a surfer dude or a black woman who's trying to sound like a damn Kardashian. That's what talking white is, not because you're educated or you're articulate. There are plenty, I'm articulate, nobody accuses me of talking white. 
Cornell West is articulate. Nobody accuses him of talking white. Several of us are very articulate and we're not considered talking white. It's you talking corny. That's considered acting white. And that's a tether. This dude is a tether. Hold on one second. Let me play the rest of this guy. This dude. When they speak correctly, you're speaking white. Then why are you talking like a white boy? You're speaking English properly. When they talk about keeping black culture black in those affluent areas, they mean they want a doctor who's also sagging. They want a, a doctor who... What? The, what the hell is he talking about? What is he talking about? We want a doctor who's sagging. No, we don't. What the hell is this dude? I don't like people. This is why family, I don't like tethers speaking for us, man. Tethers can't speak for us. Tethers are not our damn representative. I don't like non-FBA people acting as they're some spokespersons for our culture. You are not. You are not a spokesperson for our culture, dude. Hold on. Still banging and throwing up signs. I agree that there's a lot of stuff within hip hop culture that is kind of negative, for sure. All of it. <laughs> All of it. Now this dude, Sneeko, comes from, if you're Filipino and Haitian, you come from two failed cultures, dude. You come from a double failed culture. How are you gonna speak for us? Speak for one of your double failed cultures. You don't speak for us, dude. We don't need you as a damn spokesperson for us and your family comes from two cultures of failure that they fled from? What you talking about? You're not our representative. Fix your damn culture. <clears throat> we don't want a doctor who's sagging. The hell are you talking about? These tethers come around here lying about our culture. You're not a spokesperson for our culture. You're not a representative for our culture. You don't understand our culture. As a tether, you're not, you don't, none of y'all really understand foundational black American culture. All y'all know are the stereotypes that the white media throws to you. And that's who you gravitate to. You gravitate towards the stereotype crowd. You know, because well-to-do black people and progressive black people, we don't let you little funky, musty tethers in our mix. So y'all don't know how we really get down because we don't really fuck with you like that. You, you, you want to keep it a buck? The only black folks who really mess with you are the degenerates. You dig? Only the degenerate niggas let you come around to smoke and drink with them. But progressive black folks, we don't want you around us. We don't We don't really kick it with you like that. You think? Y'all hang with little weird, dusty niggas and then try to act like that's our representation. You, you don't kick it around progressive black people because you don't have anything to bring to progressive black people. You can only bring dust to dusty niggas. You bring your filth to dusty niggas. Your twerking and drugs to dusty niggas and hood rats. That's the only people that you're allowed to be around in black society. Let's keep it above. And then you start acting dumb as hell. And we're looking at you sideways. Y'all get around with the yo, yo, yo. That's not how we get down. Yo, yo, yo is not the epitome of black culture. All right? And let's stop with all that. Well, hip hop is all about yo, yo, yo. Look, hip hop, there's always different facets and waves in hip hop. When we were in the golden age of hip hop, where we were gatekeeping our culture the way we were supposed to gatekeep it in the golden age, the golden age happened late 80s, early 90s. That was the golden age of hip hop. When we were really gatekeeping our culture the way we were supposed to gatekeep our culture. We prided ourselves on articulation, originality, wordplay, intellect, consciousness. There was an anti-drug movement. Remember the self-destruction movement? We were all in the same gang. We, there was a, a, a decidedly anti-drug using movement within hip hop when we were gatekeeping our culture the way we were supposed to. When the tether started to infiltrate it, that's when it started going to hell. Yeah? And then when the white executive said, hey, these Negroes are getting too conscious, let's promote this 
let's promote some of the more degenerate behavior. You did. We had people like Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, setting a standard for how you carry yourself, your wordplay, your articulation, the consciousness within it. We had those people, the God MC, Rakim. Yeah? It was an eloquent thing. And not only that, you had our brothers and sisters in the golden age, the golden era of hip hop, bringing in that seventh element of hip hop, which is the the consciousness from the nation of gods and earths. And that's something that has to be explored. That's a very pivotal part of hip hop culture. The five percenter knowledge. That's something that's never really explored. When we do the documentary about hip hop, and I want my people, can y'all, the people from Michael Wayne TV, DJ FaZe and those guys, I'm trying, I'm, I wanna reach out to those dudes. I don't have any contact information on those brothers. If you guys can give me their contact information, because I look on their YouTube channel, I cannot find none of their contact information. I really want to reach out to those brothers because they keep it 100. And I really want to really, 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 really want to chop it up with them. The people from Michael Wayne TV, those, those brothers in the Bronx, I really, really, really want to holler at them. But yeah, we had just exquisite wordplay. And the, the white corporate structure, they started to undermine that and elevate some of the ratchet stuff over what the, um, the elevated-minded brothers were doing. But this Sneeko dude, again, getting on No Jumper, spitting all that nonsense. And that's another thing. When, when I'm up there, because I've, no, I've been on No Jumper a few times, they don't have them dudes up there when I'm there. You, you dig? They don't be up there saying that bullshit when I'm there. See, that's the thing. When I'm up there, people on their damn P's and Q's, they know not to say no shit like that. You, you see? Yeah, I, I definitely got to holler at my brother, Lord Jamar. We, uh, I, I want Lord Jamar to really break down that knowledge and how that goes into hip hop. And uh, he's from that area too, up in the Bronx. So yeah, I'm definitely, I got to reach out to my brother, um, Lord Jamar. But yeah, where's Kumo D? I would like to get Kumo D. Ain't Kumo D out here in LA? I think Kumo D is out here. Poor Righteous Teacher. Yeah, it was a brother, the producer from the Poor Righteous Teachers came to the museum out here in LA a few days ago. Shout out to that brother. He was a producer for the Poor Righteous Teachers. He came up to the museum. I was chopping up game with him. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, Michael Wayne TV is called The Culture Since 1971. Yes, they did change the name. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they, they, they don't sneak on those. They don't talk. They don't have those dudes up there when I'm there. Yeah. They don't have these dudes up there when I'm there. Yeah, so we're going to get that history straight. It's very important for us to get the history straight about what went down with hip hop. But like I said, man, with these hood rats going on here, they're platforming these hood rats and they got these hood rats twerking and shaking. All of that, man, that's an act of defiance. That's them aligning themselves with the white supremacists. Like, hey, look at white daddy and look at white daddy is allowing me to do. White daddy, I'ma let white daddy take care of everything. I don't want the brothers running nothing. Can't no nigga tell me what to do. White daddy is... They got me. So you got these women out here, the hood rat crowd, who are perpetual children. What do children do? What do babies do? Babies walk around with no clothes on. And when music come on, they bend over and start tooting their butts. That's what little babies do. You see, you got people who want to be perpetual babies under the system of white supremacy. So you, the hood rat class, that's the, the babyfied class. See, the movie Baby Boy touched on how black people are babyfied, particularly the black male. The black woman with the hood rat mindset, they are put into a perpetual state of babyism too. That's something that's not explored. Yeah, the boy, the, the baby boy living with your mama and all of that. But the hood rat, the one with the, the hood rat mentality, same thing because white daddy, they're depending on him. White daddy gives you the bare minimum so you don't really have to do that much. They're going to give you the bare minimum. So basically, you're going to let the white daddy raise your children. 
white daddy understands if he's raising your children, he's going to create a broken home environment where you can't have a man in there because if you have a man in there or if you're getting child support from a man, well, we're going to take your section eight. We're going to deduct from what you get. So, hey, no man for me. I just be out here banging different niggas and white daddy got me just like on the plantation. Right? So all I got to do is sit around the house, eat snacks like a baby, eat hot Cheetos like a baby, smoke and drink the, the instead of the formula bottle, the liquor bottle. I'm drinking Hennessy and Alizé all day like a baby, watching TV all day like a baby. Now I got Instagram and I can get an OnlyFans page so I can... I'm already walking around the house with no clothes on, so all I got to do is just bend over, show my ass, make a couple of dollars on um, OnlyFans, because White Daddy got me with the Section 8 and the EBT. White Daddy got me. And you got to understand, when the kids are raised, White Daddy wants his kids. Come on in here, prison system. You see, White Daddy ain't raising the kids for nothing. Hey, Shaquita... Hey, who, who that is? It's White Daddy. I'm coming to get Jerome, your little, your little boy. I'm coming to get your kids. All right? Because that you are a little pookie maker. That's what you, you are a breeder. We want you to, to breed our next slave. So now that we've helped create this broken home, we sat up here as white supremacists. As white supremacists, they play chess, dude. We sit here. We're going to fund you. We're going to give you this Section 8 so you can stay in the house watching our television programs with nothing but coochie popping and wet ass coochie and my booty hole brown. You're watching that all day. You're going to watch our Instagram with the same degenerate filth. All right. And all you're going to know is more sexualized behavior, degenerate twerking so that your children are going to grow up to be shit. Because if the mom is running around here twerking, coochie popping, the kids ain't going to be worth a damn because she's not going to nurture them into anything because she don't know nothing. So the kids, when they grow older, not having any life skills, it's inevitable that you're going to get into some kind of criminality. All right? Because you're going to have to feed yourself and now mama don't want the grown ass kids in the house because she still got niggas coming in. So, hey, I got I, you can't be up in here, Jody. You can't be in here, Jody. I got niggas. I'm, st I'm still in the game. Yeah, mama 43, and I had you at 15. You grown now, but mama's still in the game. I just got a BBL, Jody. So you got to get on up out of here. So you send little Tyrell to the streets. He don't know what to do. You've been twerking all his damn life. You didn't teach him nothing. You teaching him hoeing. You see, that's the thing about hoeing. Hoeing begats hoeing. That's why hoes need pimps, so that pimps can give you some life skill and some management. You know? Hoeing begats hoeing. You can only teach Mo hoeing from hoeing. So you teach this boy nothing to try to lay up with somebody to get something. Yeah? So he has no life skills, so he's hungry. So somebody, he's going to go in a store and steal something to eat or something. Then he's going to get locked up. White daddy, come on. Come on, Jarrell. Come on down, Jarrell. I got this prison for you that I'm making money off of. So white daddy's coming to collect. Yeah? I'm telling y'all the game here. White daddy knows what he's doing. White daddy comes to collect his kids. And they want to perpetuate the cycle. That works for white daddy. They want broken homes and degenerate children to fuel that prison system. They know where it's going. They know where these kids are headed to. They want super sluts. They know that a super slut is going to raise the next group of prisoners. You, you dig? They know that. Just like on the plantation. There's a reason why they said, okay, y'all go over there in that barn and get to breeding. And don't read no books now. It's the same thing in the plantation. Same thing plantation, same thing now. Hey, um, Queenie, go in that barn and get to boning. Bone those three dudes because we need some babies that I'm going to sell. We need some babies to pull this tobacco. Get up there and start breeding. And be sure you don't read a book and that baby don't read a book. So y'all don't wise up so y'all can keep this cycle going. Same thing. They don't want you to be conscious. They want you to be a twerking hood rat. Yes, you're liberated shaking your ass. Let's, do a, let's give you a million dollar budget 
let's give a, a female rapper, a couple of them, all million dollar budgets to promote this and let you see this is what you should be doing. Forget all that conscious stuff, reading, reading. Oh, that's the black man trying to control you. Don't be reading no book. Don't let a black man tell you to be respectful. Hey, listen to white daddy. That black man, he's trying to practice patriarchy on you. A black man telling you to show respect, he trying to control you. For real, white daddy? Yeah. Don't let that black man tell you to put some clothes on and don't telling you you a mother, please. Man, forget about being a mother. Mothers can twerk. Just because you a mother don't mean you got to stay at home and raise your kids. What kind of shit is that? Put that thong on and get out there and grind on Usher. Right? So that you can raise a, so that you can break up your home so your nigga can leave and you can raise that kid by yourself and he can see you being a twerking hood rat so he can grow up with a degenerate mindset. So we can lock that ass right on up and put it in our um, billion dollar industrial prison system. You see? Hoen begats Hoen. They want you to be not just a hoe, they want you to be a slut. Not even good Hoen. They want you to be a super duper slut. You see? That's why they demonize the pimping. See, right now, you got a bunch of what's called renegades out here. The OnlyFans and all that, that created a renegade mindset where these girls out here slutting it up for the bare minimum. That's not even real hoeing. You put a black eye into the hoeing. And they got these women taking pride in slut behavior. See, there's never been honor in slut behavior. Look, sometimes, look, in, in our society, during the red light districts that we used to have, you know, people had to do what they needed to do to get money, but even then there was an honor to it. We had red light districts in black societies for a long time, coming out of slavery, um, Beale Street down there in Memphis. Man, you, you had hoe houses that we were running, the sisters were running, and even the hoes at the hoe house and the madams, they had a certain decorum and a respectability within the community. They're like, look, we, gonna, we got this going on over here, we don't want the kids involved in this. We got to do what we got to do to get this money. We out here breaking these tricks, but we're going to put some of these kids in school so they don't have to come over here to this whole house. Some of the peas would say, hey, man, some of these young brothers, we don't want you out here on the blade. So we're going to give you a little something to go down to Tuskegee, my nigga. Go down to Tuskegee. Go to a trade school. Some of the peas would try to keep folks off the streets. Yeah. The hustlers would really look out for a lot of folks in the community. It was a class thing. They had class, even though they were doing some things in the underworld, they made a point to keep the underworld separate from the above world going on in black society and the normal square world. They didn't want to get anybody in the square world tangled up. Yeah, just like Harlem Knights, real talk. Just like Harlem Knights. But you kept the young folks out the game as much as you could. You tried your best to keep them out the game. You wanted them out the game. Now the lines are blurred. Now the lines are so raggedy right now. You got women out here who pride themselves on just being a, a slut that's being seen. See, back then the women who were in the game it's like, nah, I'm, I'm not trying to be all out like that. You know, we, we, we're doing what we're doing on this side of town, but we ain't trying to, it ain't all about getting attention. You know, we're doing what we got to do to get this paper. We're doing what we got to do behind closed doors. You think? They were low key with everything. What was done behind closed doors stayed behind closed doors. But right now it's a clout chasing thing and that makes the game raggedy. I saw, I saw a, a, a um, a picture of a girl the other day on Twitter. She was in New York somewhere. And she was taking a selfie in a mirror. The thick little red bone. And a couple of other people commented on her picture. She was a thick red bone, nice little body on her. Little big old ass. And she took a selfie in front of a mirror. And you can see her background. This chick had the raggediest ass bedroom I've ever seen. And she lived in New York. 
And even some dudes were commenting on her picture like, damn, bitch, you couldn't clean your room up. It was like, woman, you couldn't tidy up a little bit? Hi, ladies. Don't be out here with all that ass and an air mattress. The woman had an air mattress and a towel as a curtain on the wall. She had a goddamn towel as a curtain and she had an air mattress on the floor taking a picture of her big ass. You got all that big ass and don't know what to do with it. That's a damn shame. This is what's out here in the streets now. Dusty sluts. How you got all that ass in an air mattress? That's some disrespectful shit to the game. Y'all out here, ladies, y'all ain't got no game. Everything is all about being seen. Y'all sitting up here, your mirrors are dirty. I'm looking at like, ma'am, forget about how big your ass is. Bitch, do you have some Windex in the damn drawer? Can you spray a couple of dabs on your window? I'm looking like, damn. Dude, man, ain't nobody... That's not enticing. Y'all taking pictures in dirty ass cribs. Your house looked like a crime scene. That's not sexy. Y'all need to get some folks in your life to give you some instructions. If you're gonna be in the game or just be square, just be like the Home Depot girl. I respect her. She like, she takes a little cute little thirst trapping pictures, but her, her little apartment is real nice and clean and she has a cool little square job. I can respect that. Y'all sitting up there, your smoke alarm is beeping. Uh, Y'all got weave hair strands all on your sink. Your sink is clogged up. Your mirror is all dusty. Y'all got clothes all in the back. You ain't got no headboard for your bed. And you sitting there taking a picture, pigeon toed, talking about where the niggas at. No, bitch, where's the maid? Where the cleaner's at? Get your shit together. The game is raggedy out here. It's all about being seen. Damn, it's raggedy out here. I can respect some good hustling. I can respect some good hustling, but there's some trifling ass broads out here raised by other hood rats who didn't teach you nothing. They didn't teach you anything. They didn't give you no game. They just taught you how to be a dirty flat back and hoe with no game. Yeah? Man, every, I, I, some of this shit is, and these are young women. How are you this dusty, this young? How are you that dusty and that young? You 21 years old with all that garbage accumulated in your room like an episode of Hoarders. And you're not bad looking. Some of y'all are not bad looking, but you dusty as hell. You need some folks in your life or just square all the way the hell up. Yeah? The game is raggedy. If you're going to be in the game, be in the game. If you're going to be a square, be a square, but you're going to have to get you somebody. And here's the thing. Don't no dude, don't no square dude want to lay up with no dirty ass chick. And don't know nigga in the game, none of these certified peas, they're not going to let you be dirty and dusty either. Some of these certified peas, these niggas are clean. The players, notice that the peas stay dressed, they stay fly, the whips are fly, they like real fly clean shit. So they don't want no dirty, dusty broad. The peas are going to be like, hey, bitch, clean this up before I come over here. In fact, you know what? Let's burn your whole house down. We're going to get another joint because this is raggedy. You can't be with me and you living like this. So the peas are going to make you step your cleaning game up. A real certified pea ain't going to be laying up with no dirty, dusty bra because that's going to reflect bad on his pimping. Yeah? So the peas are going to stay clean with it. They don't want no dirty, dusty ass bra. You're going to make his pimping look raggedy. Yeah? So you can't go nowhere around no dude who's certified on the streets or in the square world being no dirty, dusty, lazy, slutty broad. 
There's no honor in that. You understand? There's no honor in that whatsoever. I can respect a certain a, a woman, a hustler. You out here getting paper. You got you some tricks you breaking and you getting yours and you respecting the rules of the game and you trying to get some out the game. I can respect that. I'm not, I'm not judgmental on no square shit. I can respect any woman who's getting what they need to get, doing what they need to do. If you're getting what you need to get out the game and, and you're doing it and you got a purpose and a goal, I can only pop my collar to that because certain people got to do what they got to do. But all of this shit, just loosey-goosey, slutty nonsense, you just doing shit, and then when the white supremacists come up, you all booed up with the white supremacists? That's, that's goofy slut shit that nobody respects. That's goofy, corny stuff that nobody respects. That's a black eye in the game all across the board. Yeah? So we're trying to get that janky mentality about the game. We're trying to get that up out of here. But the thing is, man, a like, like I said, a lot of the tether class people are pushing a lot of this stuff. And like I said, man, the hood rats, they're perpetual kids. They go around the house. The house is dirty as hell, just like kids. Kids, what do hood rats do? Just like kids, they walk around a dirty house. Kids put their hands all over shit. There's stains all over the place. That's what ki kids do. You walking around in just the diaper, right? And everybody retweet this while I'm talking. We got almost 8,000 people in here. Everybody retweet this while I'm talking because we have a lot of people in here, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing our thing. A lot of people are in the room, ladies and gentlemen. We are doing our thing. Everybody retweet this. We're in here heavy. Retweet this. But like I said, the hood rat mindset, the hood rats operate like kids. You walk around the house in your drawers or your diaper. You go around just eating snacks all day. You don't eat anything healthy. You know? The hood rats. Hood rats are known for not really eating healthy stuff. You're eating garbage food. You're eating snacks all day. You're drinking bullshit. You don't drink enough water. <laughs> That's why hood rats got that dry ass skin. You know? You got fingerprints all over the place. The house stank, just like kids. You leave kids in the house, there's shit all over the place. The house starts stinking. And then when a hood rat has to leave the house for anything, when a hood rat does have to leave the house and put on something, what do they do? They put on pajamas and a bonnet. So when you're forced to leave the house, what's up, Street TV? Shout out to my brother, Street TV. Shout out to my brother, Street TV. When you do have to leave the house, you put on a bonnet and pajamas. You, you're still walking around like a kid, just like kids. When kids go out, they put on some pajamas and their flip-flops and some um, Crocs. You, know, you walk around the house with your bonnet and pajamas on, just like a kid. Yeah? You're perpetual children. Hood rats are perpetual children, eating snacks all day, dirty house, putting fingerprints all over the place, fingerprints all on the mirror. You leave the house with your bonnet and pajamas. You might get in a fight in the street with another child and then go home, drink and smoke and lay up and watch bullshit all day. Yeah? It's, it's heavy. It's heavy talk. Yeah? So that type of mentality, that, that, that nonsense that's being promoted, the tether class promote that stuff. They promote that to us. And we have to say enough is enough. We have to say, no, we're not going to let you promote this stuff to us. We're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let it happen. Yeah, if you go to a hood rat's crib, you're not going to see too many fruits and vegetables in the refrigerator. You're going to see Sunny Delight, Hot Cheetos, um, Alize, Hennessy, and, and a couple of Lunchables. You're not going to see too many fruits and vegetables and some vegan dishes with a hood rat. And but listen, this is why it's important for us to gatekeep the culture and we talk about what it is that is going to be a part of our culture What's the representatives of our culture? It's up to us to, to push that line. 
Because, see, we let people sit up here and try to promote Wakanda stuff to us, especially the tethers. See, the tethers sit up here. They come here, tell us how bad it is for us here. Oh, nigga, you should not be here in America, nigga. They, they treat you with racism. Racism is so bad. You need to go to the motherland. When you go to the motherland, you're breathing in freedom. The air is just fresh. Remember when Rotimi said that? Rotimi was like, yeah, man, when I go to Africa, man, you know, I breathe in freedom and every, the air is just fresh. Man, when I'm over here, I'm just breathing in problems. Well, nigga, why are you here? Why are you are not, why are you ain't over there? Why are you not over there breathing in all that freedom, my G? You talking about you breathing in problems, but yet you here. Uh oh, you said I got Jamel Hill mad. Oh, did she say something about me? What did she say? What did Jamel Hill say about me? But yeah, like I said, they sit up here and talk about we need to go over there to the motherland and whoop de whoop and whoop de yada. No, we don't need to go over there. We're going to get it popping right over here. It's not popping over there. And they know it. It's not popping over there. To be honest, and I'm not trying to denigrate Africa. Look, I got a lot of love for brothers and sisters over there. I do. But it's just not popping over there, especially for us. And when people say that they have all of these initiatives, uh, yeah, Ghana wants you to come home. Kenya wants you to come over here. No, they want us to come over there and drop off a bag. <coughs> They only want us to come over on one condition. They'll open the doors if we have a certain bag. They want to know, nigga, if you come over, send your bank account statements. We got to let them know exactly how much money we got. They want us to come over and drop a bag off. No thank you. No thank you. Shout out to everybody for the super chat. Shout out to Anoon Jamal. Let me shout out to everybody for the super chat. Shout out to um, D. Knight. He said he's a Section 8 landlord and investor, more than right. Kids hang on to everything, cabinets and drawers, everything can be broken. Yeah. Shout out to um, Off Street Black. Shout out to Lance Shepard. B1 in Houston. Shout out to my brother. Shout out to, uh, okay, shout out to all the Super Chat folks. Much respect to you guys. But yeah, they want us to go over there. As long as we dropping a bag off, they got to make sure we bringing something over so they can leech off that shit. Yeah. Don't man, they sit up here and try to tell us we you niggas don't have no culture over there. You the white man is going to abuse you. Come over here. Let me see your bank statements though. But yeah, come over here. So we can um leech some money off your ass because we didn't scam each other to the point where nobody got nothing. So we need fresh meat. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. They look at us as fresh meat. The white folks, they ain't going to scam them because the white folks, they, they corner themselves off from y'all over there. They go over there and set up shop and then they run things remotely from their homelands. The Asians go over there, set up shop, and they build factories and lock your ass out. So you can't get in there and get access to that Asian money because they run things remotely. So you can't finesse them. So they're like, hey, niggas, come over. I brought us. Come over, brothers. You are brothers. Come home. Um, but you have to have at least $50,000 in investments. Nigga, please. No. See, people can come over here. We fight for them, and they come over here with two nickels, and we help them, and then they turn around. Look, I came over here with two nickels. Look at me now. I'm doing so much better than you niggas. You know, they come over here and then try to pull rank. But Gianna, let me tell you something. There's been several instances over there. I've shown videos like in Ghana and places like that where black folks go set up, FBAs go over there and set up shop, and then they come up with some kind of finesse and take people's land, take people's property, and then have a whole bunch of dusty-ass niggas sitting out there just scavenging, and the cops ain't doing nothing. The cops are just sitting up there while regular niggas are just coming up taking black folks' FBA stuff. There's a video now where they're saying their sisters over there in the Gambia are getting killed by them niggas. Where's this video? Hold on. I just saw a video recently where the sisters, FBA sisters are going over there to the Gambia and they're getting killed over there now. 
Hold on. Let me show y'all this. And fair use, fair use. This is happening over in the Gambia now where sisters are getting killed going over there by the dudes. Hold on. So you all, I come on to just react to a phone call that I received today. And one of my beautiful subscriber queen sisters, yep. she was concerned about some videos that she have seen concerning African-American women dying in the Gambia. And it should be a concern. Now she's saying dying, but these women are actually being killed over there. So she's still kind of minimizing it. They're being killed over there. Cause guess what? It's true. So apparently um, black American women, some black American women have moved to the Gambia and they've been murdered. Uh, that's what that video is about. Of course she downplays it. She says they have died. But you know, if you, if you watch the rest of the video, I'll include the link. They pretty much were murdered, okay? And there's a couple of things that I wanna bring up here in re relations to that. This whole idea of uh, passport sisters is pretty dumb and dangerous. It's dangerous for obvious reasons. Uh, women should not be traveling to poor countries. American women should not be traveling to poor countries. Right, I agree with this dude. Without a man, okay? Uh, some of you women, American women, you've been brainwashed by feminism to think that, you know, you can take on a man physically and you don't need a man. When you go to these poor countries, you'll find out the value of having a man as a protector. You may find out the hard way. It may cost you your life. All right. This brother is spitting facts. Like I said, you go over to these other countries, they don't have the white feminists there to kind of punish niggas. They don't have the white feminists there. See, the only reason a lot of these hood rats or whatever over here get sassy is because white mommy and white daddy is there. They can say, if you, if you say something to me, I call white mommy and white daddy, I get you locked up. I call the police. It, it, yeah. That's the only reason you can get away with being sassy, with all of that sass. That's that plantation sass. That only works if you're backed up by white mommy and white daddy. That's the only reason it works. That's why hood rats who are very sassy and slick mouth, they love white supremacy. That's why they're twerking on white daddy. That's why they surrender. They don't want white daddy to be out the mix there. If you want to be sassy and you want to twerk, you want white daddy right here to back you up to keep the niggas in line, just like on the plantation. All right. I want y'all to understand the dynamic that goes back to everything we're talking about in the broadcast. The hood rats love white daddy. All the sassy, I don't need a man. No, when white daddy come in the room, boy, they really get the twerking and kissing and, and ball rubbing for white daddy. White daddy is their backup. That's Massa. They know Massa's running the plantation. Now, when you get over there to these other countries, Massa is not there directly. So you say something to one of them dudes over there, hey, white mommy, white daddy is not there to come get you and save you from Undugu. Umdugu is like, what, what, what? Umdugu will behead your ass and then get your organs and sell them. You dig? That's why these women go over there, say something slick to one of them damn crazy musty niggas and then end up missing. You feel me? Yeah. These women, you can't go to these other countries thinking that you're going to call white mommy, white daddy. White mommy, white daddy ain't there. They don't, you don't have direct access to them. You can't get on the phone with white mommy, white daddy in these other spots. I remember years ago, one of my exes years ago, me and her, we went to, um, we were actually on a cruise ship. Me and my chick went on a cruise ship. She was a real cute, little slick mouth chick. She was a real slick mouth, cute chick. So we went on a cruise in the Caribbean. And we one of the stops was in the Bahamas. And while we were in the Bahamas, we were going to rent some mopeds and drive around um, Nassau. We we're going to ride mopeds around Nassau. So while she was looking at one moped, I'm going to the, you know, um, the little um, rental shack. That's basically what it was. It was basically in a parking lot. And once the ship docks, we can walk over to 
the town and we can like rent a little moped and so there's a lot of the locals trying to you know hey 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 let me give you a cab you know there's a lot of the locals around trying to sell stuff trying to give us cab rides trying to make their little money all right so while she's looking at the mopeds I'm a few feet away talking to the person who um who's running the little moped shack so I hear her in my peripheral she kind of got smart with the dudes. They gave her a moped, and she was like, this shit is raggedy. I don't want this raggedy shit. And them dudes flipped out. Like, hey, 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 what do you mean raggedy? What do you mean my shit is raggedy? Bullshit. What do you mean? And then they started kind of, the dudes started kind of surrounding her. Then I was like, oh, well, hold on. Hey, 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 hey. So I had to push up on the dudes, like, hey, let's back that shit up. Like, oh, okay, nigga. So they had to back it on up. But nigga, do I had to pull her to the side? Like, hey, you know, kind of chill out on that shit out here. Hey, 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 chill, chill out out here. You know, don't we ain't at home. Don't do all that bullshit you do at home out here. We in a different spot. The game is different out here. So chill your ass out. You know? Yeah, it, it almost went bad real fast. Yeah. It almost went bad real damn fast. Yeah. They do not care, dude. Yeah, they about to get her ass. Yeah, that, yeah all that slick talk, don't that shit don't work out here. Yeah. So yeah, man. The game is different. The game is very, very different. Yeah? So we got to get it right out here, man. We got to get this game right. And we got to understand the game that's out here, man. And look, we need each other. Black men, black women, we, we're on the same page. We need each other. It's a lot of folks in here. I think, man, we got a lot of folks in here. Shout out to everybody in here. We in here heavy. All the new people who's listening, I need y'all to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of folks in here. A lot of folks in here. If you have not subscribed, subscribe and then hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when I go live, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget, man, in the next couple of weeks, my um, new deodorant, we have a deodorant coming out. And with the deodorant, there's a little booklet that comes with the deodorant. That's how thorough it is. We have a deodorant package that we're going to have. It's going to be a great launch. You guys are going to love it. We have an all-natural deodorant coming out. Family, this thing is going to be huge. And you're going to love the all-natural deodorant because some of y'all are musty. And we're going to get that must up out of here. The natural way. It's very important to put natural things under your arm. Yeah? So the deodorant is coming. I'm going to tell y'all the name. I'm going to you know, tell you the name next week. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all the name next week. Oh, yeah, it's coming. I, I, I'm going to let y'all know the name and everything. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to tell y'all the name, and we even got a little booklet to go with the deodorant. That's how thorough it is. I got on some now. I smell phenomenal right now. No ammonia, no aluminum. You understand? I'm big on deodorant, man. And a lot of stuff, man, what they put in deodorant, it really has negative effects on your body. They try to say... Um, you know, that a lot of the stuff is um, is not connected to cancer. Yes, it is, man. Some of that deodorant that they got out here, man, some of that shit causes cancer, especially breast cancer for, with women, yeah? And some of that stuff messes up your pH balance and it messes up your body, man, because you put stuff under your arm, man. That's, your underarms are very sensitive. Your underarms are very sensitive, man. You put some of this bullshit under your arms, it'd be messing up your kidneys. It's some heavy stuff, man. Oh, yeah, 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 it's coming. Yeah, because I'm big on deodorant, man. Because, see, I used to, man, I used to use the regular deodorant because I don't like being musty. Yeah, your armpits are very sensitive, man. And, dude, I would use some of this stuff from the stores. And, man, it would, I would get lumps under my arms, man. Yeah, that shit, yeah, your lip nodes, man, is up under there. It's very important what you put under your arms, man. That's very important. That's why one of the most important things you can do in the daytime, man. And what happens, you put chemicals under your shit and it just messes your whole joint up. 
You know, so we got to start, yeah, getting our minds and our bodies right. We getting our minds and our bodies right, man. Yeah. A lot of folks don't know that, man. You got lymph nodes under your, your arms. Yeah. That aluminum from spray deodorant, we're going to have to stop using that. Yeah, we're going to have to stop using that stuff. Yeah. You had that before? Yeah. Yeah, it clogs your glands. Yeah, it, it has been found to give people Alzheimer's. Man, it, it's, it's bad. It tears your hormones up, putting them chemicals under your arms like that, man. That's horrible for you. And I'm telling you from experience, dude, I, that shit, I would have these weird, painful-ass lumps under my arms using some of that spray deodorant. Nah, so I've, I've been experimenting for a while, just kind of researching stuff. And what I would do, man, I would research our foundational Black American culture, man. I would research some of the things that our healers would do. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Tussy. My mom used to use that Tussy, that Tussy red back in the day. And that wasn't too bad. But yeah, some of the spray stuff that they got now, yeah, it's it's horrible for you. So that's one thing I wanted to do. I said I was looking for different deodorants and I said, you know what, I need to we need to create something. Let me just create something because a lot of the natural stuff, it just couldn't get right. If it was natural, it felt funny. If it was natural, it smelled weird. It had a weird smell. So I said, let me just get something that I like. So I got something that I really, really like that I wear. That feels good on me. It ain't poisoning my ass and it smells good. And I'm going to share it with you in a couple of weeks. With no aluminum. I'm going to share it with you in a couple of weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we got to monitor our health. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Toms of Maine. Yeah, that's all right. I don't like the way that Tom smelled, though. Yeah, that Tom's, It. I don't like the way it smells. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, people really underestimate that deodorant. Yeah, all these different chemicals you put on your stuff, man. It, you know, you got to under, you really got to understand what you're putting on your body. And a lot of us don't even think twice about that damn deodorant and what we're putting in our bodies. And then you wonder why your body's all damn janky. Yeah? Yeah? But um, anyway, man, the deodorant is coming in a couple of weeks. But for, for the time being, get the movie American-Maroon. American-Maroon.com. That's the new movie. American-Maroon.com. Family, if you don't have your FBA flags, you got to have them in your car, in your home. Go to officialfba.com, officialfba.com. Get your FBA flags, ladies and gentlemen, officialfba.com. And um, anyway, guys, it's been real. I think we had a real conversation, real heavy conversation tonight, family. It's been very real. Anyway, we'll chop it up later this week. I'm going to Hidden History Museum, throw down a little something for the museum, support the museum, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. And I wish you a puppy.